Lotus Ventures Inc. is a BC-based medical marijuana company poised to launch into the rapidly evolving cannabis sector. Lotus is in the final review stage of the Health Canada approvals to become a licensed producer, having arranged facility financing of up to $12 million, plus building permits for its prototype indoor production facility. Shares trade under the symbol J on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Visit our website at lotusventures.ca. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sharon Noble. She's the director of the Coalition to Stop Smart Meters in BC. Welcome back to the show, Sharon. Thank you so much, Jim. Well, it looks like the Goddard Report is in a very unique position. I'm the only media outlet, you say, to call you about your report about... 47 suspected fires caused by smart meters and, of course, other safety concerns. I'm the only one to call you about it? You're the only one. You're the only person, agency, media outlet to do it. I've received nothing from anybody else in more than, and it's been more than a month since I sent this thing out to everyone. Now, I find that very shocking. But should I be surprised? I am discouraged and I am frustrated and I'm shocked. I mean, the fact of the matter is we've got fire hazards on our home. People's lives and property are being put at risk. And this demonstrates more than anything that no one cares. Jim, I spent three years gathering information about the smart meters and about smart meter fires and The report that I hand-delivered to John Horgan's office early in September in abound hard copies. I mean, there are 700 pages. It took two large binders. He got it. I sent it to Adrian Dix. I sent it to Mungo. I sent it to Trevera, who is Trevina, who is the minister for, uh, in charge of the fire commissioner. Mungo is the person, the minister in charge of uh, BC Hydro. I um, mailed it off to the BC Utilities Commission, um, and I emailed copies to every MLA, and I waited for approximately three weeks before doing a press release. Then on September 21st, I sent out a press release to all the, the media outlets. I received not one response except from the BC Utilities Commission, who told me they were asking BC Hydro for comments. That's it. In three years, I had to track fires, electrical fires, that people brought to my attention. It was um, The fires are not mentioned in newspapers anymore, saying that there was a smart meter involved. They stopped doing this. So it's only if, for instance, it looks or sounds suspicious, like it started in the middle of the night, usually in a garage or on the outside wall of a home. These are things that triggered my interest, and I would pursue the, the getting the reports. I followed the way the reports are supposed to be occurring. First, I'd go to the fire commissioner. The report, according to the BC Safety Standards Act, is supposed to be provided by the fire department to the fire commissioner within just a few days of the fire. They're supposed to have completed the inspection within three days. In a vast number of cases. I would say, I don't I don't have the number in front of me, it's in my report, but I would say at least 50% of the cases, the report was either not submitted or it was submitted very, very late. In many instances, the report was not submitted until I made my request. And sometimes my request was maybe a year, a year and a half after the fire. The fire commissioner is not getting the reports on a consistent basis. Yet, his report, his annual report, in which he provides merely counts. If you look at the BC Fire Commissioner's annual report, it's a few pages long. You will see what he does is he counts the number of fires. There were 300 electrical fires, 400 fires caused by smoking, whatever. That's all he does. 
This annual report formed the basis for BC Utilities Commission's statement that there have been no smart meter fires. Len Garris, who is the former head of the Fire Chiefs Association and the Fire Chief for Surrey, was paid, commissioned and paid by BC Hydro to determine if smart meters are safe. All Len Garris did for after being paid at least $15,000 in the first year, and I'm assuming the same in the next year, which has been two or three days, looking at this fire commissioner's report and then writing like a four or five page statement saying that because there were fewer electrical fires reported, say in 2014 than that was in 2010 before the smart meters came in, this means that smart meters aren't causing fires. First, this is an amazing jump in logic. It makes no sense at all. But more importantly, he's basing his statement on a report that is incomplete. The fire commissioner is not getting the information. But Len Garris didn't know it. He didn't research it. So his statement that there have been no, there have been no smart meter fires is completely fallacious. It's ridiculous. And this is the only thing that BC Utilities Commission and BC Hydro are hanging their hats on. Further, after I would get the fire commissioner's report, or not get the fire commissioner's report, as the case may be, I would go to the BC Safety Authority. According to the BC um, Sand Fire Stand Standards Act, any fire that is suspected to have been caused or related to anything electrical is supposed to be inspected immediately by BC Safety Authority. Many times, I would say probably at least 50% of the time, BC Safety Authority is not being advised about the electrical fires. So the fires are not being inspected. And oftentimes when they are called, by the time they get there, which may be the next day after the fire, the meter's been removed. BC Hydro, which is against the law, is removing the meter from the scene of the fire without permission, before the inspection is taking place. And in many other instances, the meter has burned up. It's not there. It's combustible. It's not like the old analog meter, which was glass and metal. It's a plastic piece of junk that burns up. So it's destroyed. There's no evidence. It is the perfect tool for an arson because it's, it burns itself up. And all of these infringements, all of these regulations, everything that's being done inappropriately leads to the fact that nobody knows what's going on. Nobody is tracking these fires. Nobody has any information about it. I bet you, in fact, I would bet you a thousand dollars that I know more about what is happening with the fires and the fire reporting scene than anybody else. The fire commissioner believes he's receiving all the reports. I've written to him and told him he's not getting his reports. And he says, well, there's nothing I can do about it. If they don't send it, what am I supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? You're supposed Come to be Come on, you're the, the fire law. commissioner. You can order reports to be sent to you. Get well, off your high horse. I, do something. They, they would write. The fire commissioner office would write. I would tell them, this is a fire that occurred six, eight months ago. You don't have the report yet. They'd write the fire department and say, please send me the report. They'd send me a copy of their request. I'd wait a month. I'd go back and I'd say, have you received this report yet? Nope, haven't received it yet. What are you going to do about it? I've asked them. I just have to wait. They never got the report. And then when I asked them about it, I said, "Why? what kind of controls do you have? And they say, if a fire isn't reported, how do we know it occurred? How are we supposed to handle this? We aren't responsible. Yes, they are responsible. They are responsible. Under their mandate, they're supposed to get reports on every single solitary fire, any fire that has caused damage. And in fact, they say, the BC commissioner says, they don't even expect to get reports unless there's significant damage. Versus there were no reports for a smart meter fire, for instance, on the Sparwood 
post office where a smart meter uh, caught fire and burned. Fortunately, someone was walking by at the time and had an extinguisher. They put the fire out, so only slight damage was done. It was never reported by Hydro. It was never reported by the fire department. Hydro does not have to report anything. If they are called in and a meter has melted, overheated, burned, but the homeowner put the fire out, and this has happened many times, and I've had the homeowner send me the pictures, Hydro is not compelled to report this. And I have Hydro many times telling fire departments or telling the victims that they are sending the, the smart meter, they're removing the smart meter from the scene of the fire because they're going to have it inspected. Yet when I went to BC Hydro and asked about the inspection, they, they told me, no, they never inspect it. They send it off to ITRON for immediate replacement under the warranty. I also wrote to BC Hydro's lab, which is called PowerTech. They're the ones who are supposed to be doing any inspection of any electrical appliance or anything that might be defective. They told me, and I have it in writing, that they've never received a smart meter to inspect. It's this old adage, if you don't look, you won't find. And no one in this province wants to look, and they sure as heck don't want to find. I am amazed and appalled that the people in charge, like Energy Minister Mungle and John Horgan, have chosen to ignore this. It's a very important issue. I wasn't surprised when the Liberals ignored it. They they were invested in it. It was their program. They had their buddies and friends uh, in ITRON and Corex, their former former political buddies and stuff. Um, you know, on their side, they chose to ignore it. The NDP has no vested interest or shouldn't. Why are they allowing this to go on? How many other homes have to burn down? And I don't know what, what other ones I've missed. I'm sure that there are many more out there that I don't know about because I only learned about them if I found or someone sent me a, a report from a newspaper or if they knew from personal experience from talking to the homeowner or, you know, or were living nearby or someone and, and heard about this fire. I don't, you know, that's the only way I learned about it. How many other fires have occurred that I just don't know about? I bet that there are a lot of them. And I don't know, Jim, what else we need to do. These meters should be recalled. Horgan initially, years ago, three, four, or five years ago, when I told him that these meters are endangering our health, ITRON is selling a meter that is emitting a 2B carcinogen, which is illegal. They should not be selling a dangerous product. When I told him that they were causing fires, he refused to support me, saying that the contracts had been signed, that there was nothing he could do. He said he was concerned about the costs that would be involved if anything were done to break the contracts. Since when are we compelled to accept a faulty appliance? Why are we forced to have something that ITRON knew Years before Hydro signed that contract, they knew that this device was dangerous. There have been ITRON fires. There have been other smart meter fires all over the United States. Engineers had told them that the design was faulty. These have never been certified to be safe by a single independent agency or by a single electrical engineer. I've hounded BC Hydro to tell me what they did during their due diligence period before they signed the contract. And they did nothing. They accepted ITRON's word that they were safe. That's all they did. I've got that in writing too. They did nothing. And under any sort of scenario, if a product is defective, it should be removed, it should be recalled. Just as a defective car, just as a defective toaster as anything should be recalled we should get our money back and a safe alternative should be provided and the only safe alternative is an analog meter digital meters which are electrical I don't care whether they're smart meters or if they have to be read manually they are all designed with flaws that 
are not do not exist in the analog meter. I, Jim, it is one of the most frustrating and amazing things I've ever heard of. Why can't no media person, you are the only one who has expressed any interest in this matter at all? We'll have more with Sharon Noble right after the break. I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent-pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest-cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com, or phone us at 604-924-5504. Glance Technologies owns and operates Glance Pay, a disruptive mobile payment technology now live in 16 cities in Canada and about to launch in the U.S. With revenues up 664% in the last quarter, Glance Technologies has the potential to be a worldwide leader in an industry projected to grow to $1.3 trillion in three years. Glance Technologies stock symbols are GLNFF in the U.S. and GET in Canada. Find out more at glancepay.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sharon Noble. Sharon, you're very surprised that nobody in the media contacted you about this 700-page report you did on smart meter fires. Well, I just look at global television. Their entire weather staff does commercials for BC Hydro. Do you think that they're going to pick up a phone and give you a call about fires that might be caused by a piece of equipment supplied by BC Hydro? Unfortunately, you're absolutely right. There are conflicts of interest throughout whether it's the telecoms with regard to the radiation. You know, the telecoms have their fingers in every media outlet, too. Hydro is advertising widely. No. Nope. We, we are being forced. We've got no legal right to say no to having these on our homes. Under the Clean Energy Act, we have to have these things on our homes if we want to have power. And there, if the few of us who still have our analogs, and I'm one of them, but I don't know for how long, we're paying $32.40 a month to supposedly have these meters read. The costs have never been justified, and no financial accounting has ever been provided. They, Hydro has made at least $20 million from these extortion fees, and no accounting has been done. It's the highest fee in North America for opt-outs. Hydro has lied to us in many regards. They've said that, you know, first of all, it costs all this money to come and read the meters. First of all, reading the meters has already been included in our rates. Meters used to be read until three, four years ago. Every meter was read. Our rates included that service, but not anymore. Secondly, they are telling us that all of these smart meters are going to be doing all of these services for us. It's not happening. Energy usage is not declining. These meters are not green. They're not helping the environment. In fact, just the opposite. They lied when they said that the average life expectancy of the meter is at least 20 years. We know analogs lasted 30, 40, 50 years with absolutely no maintenance. These things have an expected lifespan. According to the, the industry itself, according to smart meter companies, of five to seven years. And we in British Columbia pay more per meter than any other place in North America that I've been able to find. The cost of the program costs at least $555 per meter. That includes, of course, all of the infrastructure. But these meters will cost us a fortune down the road by the time the 20-year amortization period that was estimated by Hydro and given to the government in its financial statements, we will probably be paying for at least two smart meters, probably even three on many homes. And many homes have already had their smart meters changed. These meters are basically computers that have to be replaced and updated like any other computer, except these are combustible computers. This is something... The public has not been told. The government has not been told. And I don't even know if BC Hydro knew it. They didn't do much of in, in the way of due diligence with regard to anything that I can find out. All they did, 
They, in fact, I've got in writing when I asked them, did you ask when you were doing your, your solicitation for quotes, did you ask for anything about wired meters? Meters could be wired to our homes through fiber optic cable and be perfectly safe. The data would be secure. There would be no chance of hacking. There wouldn't be a chance of fires. No, they didn't even ask for it because they didn't know. All they did was ask ITRON to provide a quote. And, of course, ITRON provided a quote for the cheapest, which is a wireless, and they charged the highest rate, and Hydro went for it. We've been taken for a ride in so many respects. Jim, it's just ridiculous that no one's holding our government and the BC Utilities Commission feet to the fire. Now is the time for the BC Utilities Commission to do its job. According to the Clean Energy Act, which was written by Campbell, Gordon Campbell said that the BC Utilities Commission could not get involved in the smart meter program. The reason he did this was in 2008, Ford of BC uh, provided an application for a smart meter program, which was exactly the same program that BC Hydro later implemented. BC UC did its job. It looked at the cost, it looked at the program, and it declined the application. It declined it on two bases. One, that the benefits did not justify the costs, which has worked out to be exactly right. They were so correct. And two, the technology was too new. They said, we don't know if it's safe, we don't know if it's efficient, we don't know if it will work. And again, they were right. So what did Gordon Campbell do? In the Clean Energy Act, the BC Utilities Commission has no authority to get involved in two major projects, Site C and the Smart Meter Program. So for years, I couldn't get BC Utilities Commission to look at any of the data I was gathering. Finally, I rubbed their nose in it. And I said, under the BC Utilities Commission Act, your prime job is to ensure that the citizens of British Columbia are provided with safe, secure services by the utility companies. And this is not safe. And the BC Utilities Commission, your job is overridden. It overrides the Clean Energy Act. So finally, they agreed to look at my complaint. But they're ignoring it because they say that Len Garris's report says that there's no danger. We'll have more with Sharon Noble right after this. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason. President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Ridout Shear Zone in Ontario, with grab samples running as high as 32 grams per ton gold. A follow-up drill program to test the numerous targets located by recent groundwork will commence later this year. Please visit our website at rmroyalty.com. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're chatting with Sharon Noble. Sharon, what's your next step now that the media in BC and Canada and uh, the BC government, both the opposition and the government, have decided to ignore your report? What's your next step? I'm going to see if I can find someone like Wendy Nesley who would like to do an in depth story about the willful negligence that's occurring in British Columbia. This needs to be divulged. This needs to be investigated, and I think our government needs to be held to account. The NDP was not a party to this decision initially, but they could have stopped it several times along the way. And I believe that they are, they are guilty now of having the responsibility and ignoring it. I am going to search until I can find someone who is willing to dig into this, follow the money, and hold them accountable. And I'm encouraging people who have had fires to use my fire report because I've got evidence that, that might help them should, should they take BC Hydro to court. I'm also going to make a copy of this available to the BC Law Society in case there are any lawyers out there um, who wish to take BC Hydro or ITRON to court. I'm also, I have also made my report re available to uh, major groups um, in the United States who are fighting these things and who have suffered fires. 
they may not have the exact same meter that we have here, but as many electrical engineers have said, these meters are all um, basically the same. And I think that somewhere, perhaps in the United States, where they are far more litigious than we are here, somebody will take these meters, meter companies to court and win. And I'm happy if they would use my material, if it would help them at all. I also believe that many places across Canada and the U.S., the tracking and reporting system is probably just as deficient as it is here in British Columbia. If it weren't, we would have heard a lot more about more fires. We hear about hundreds of fires, but um, it's not reported and tracked by the fire commissioners and fire marshals elsewhere. Uh, so I think that there is a great a gap across Canada and the United States, and if my report will help close that gap or identify the deficiencies, that would be terrific. I also think that there are electrical engineers here in Canada and the U.S. who now are going to take a second look at these meters because I've pointed out quite a few deficiencies. And fortunately... There were two electrical engineers, both from the U.S., who agreed to allow me to quote them and to use their names, both of whom are very, very knowledgeable. They individually have worked for utility companies. They took the ITRON meters apart, looked at them, and identified many of the design flaws. Also, I am proceeding with BC Hydro. If they did not do their due diligence, and I'm getting a royal runaround, which is typical with BC Hydro. If they did not investigate any of the design flaws or have any independent electrical engineer who works for them to investigate or inspect the, the meters before, I think that they could be held um, liable for negligence. It's their duty to make sure that their equipment is safe. They own these meters. Because they own these meters, we can't go to people like Consumer Affairs and report and ask for a recall. We should be able to, but we can't. That's the law. But I think that BC Hydro should be held liable for, use, for using this equipment that is dangerous. They have not done their jobs. And um, I would be willing to help anybody um, who is willing to confront this from a legal basis, who wants to carry forward with this. Because I really do think that, you know, there is something here that should be pursued seriously. Because lives and property are being put at risk. There's no two ways about it. Sharon, is there a website people can look at or sign up and try to do something about this? There sure is, Jim, and they can go to it to read my full report and look at the documentation. It's on the website, www stopsmartmetersbc.com and if they have any questions whatsoever they can submit a comment there online and I'll be more than happy to get back to them Sharon thank you so much for sharing that information with us Jim thank you so much for allowing me to share it I really appreciate it my guest has been Sharon Noble director of the BC Coalition to Stop Smart Meters her website StopSmartMetersBC.com. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. If you have any questions for the show or our guests, they can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of Howe Street Media Incorporated.